question. How do I know when a bad experience I had was really traumatic or if I'm just too sensitive? I hear this one a lot, especially for people who've experienced abuse of one form or another, because one of the things that the abuser does as part of their um, toolkit is to minimize the abuse. Obviously, they're not going to say, I'm sorry, I'm so terrible to you, uh, although they may but that may also just be a, a manipulative uh, tactic. I'm so sorry, you're, you're right, you're better off without me in order to bring you back. That's a different conversation. Um, so how do I know whether I'm sort of, whether my reaction to something is uh, out of proportion or not, whether I'm being appropriately upset or triggered by it, or whether um, I'm just, you know, full of drama. So there's a couple of different things that I, I look at. I wouldn't say that anybody is too sensitive, like from an objectively measured place. It's all subjective, it's all relative, which is a fancy way of saying it depends, I guess, in a way. But what I mean by that is a certain degree of sensitivity in one circumstance is an impairment, in another circumstance is an advantage. It's when there's a mismatch between my degree of sensitivity and the environment or situation that I'm in that something becomes too sensitive or not sensitive enough. Maybe let's get rid of that language altogether about something being someone being too sensitive. And it's a weird way of talking, I know, but like effectively, effectively sensitive is probably a more accurate way of saying it. Is that is is the degree of sensitivity effective in handling the situation? Um, because it might be yes, it might be no, but it might, it's still the same level of sensitivity. Applying uh, your context, your situation to uh, somebody else that you care about or don't care about, could be a perfect stranger, and say, how would that person react in that situation? That might be one thing you could do. Another, if I'm trying to figure out if my reaction is, is out of proportion, one of, one of the things I might suggest is to describe the situation that you're reacting to as if it happened to someone else. Now, maybe that might be someone that you really care about. Uh, for example, people say, well, you know, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't abused as a child or anything. I mean, I got the belt and everything, but I mean, I wouldn't call that abuse. And I'd say, okay, can you picture someone doing that to your child? Can you picture doing that to your child? No way. Okay, well then why not? Probably because you recognize that it's violent and harmful. Well, that's abuse. So sometimes stepping outside of our, our own perspective and seeing it from a third person perspective from the outside can help us wake up a little bit to it. The thing the, that we've, that's been hidden from us, like denial, denial sort of gets a bad rap and that people think of denial as sort of the de deceptiveness and refusing to accept something. Often it's just blindness, right? We've been conditioned that certain things are, are normal and acceptable and it hasn't occurred to us that there is an alternative. Describe the situation in context instead of a vacuum. So what I mean by that is, let's say um, somebody, well, it's a question that, that somebody sent in, I'll use that as an example. So they went to the, the store to get a paintbrush. They were told you can't have a paintbrush. It's not essential, so you can't come in the store. So the, the person gets really emotional about that. And obviously he's going, what is wrong with me? It's a paintbrush. Why am I reacting this way? He's like, but what is the context of that interaction? The context, there's like that, the context of that, that moment where I was tired and hungry and they were rude and such and such. And then we zoom out a little bit to, the, to see the further context. I'm in the middle of this quarantine lockdown. I'm going stir crazy because of my ADHD. And I finally found a project that would lift me out of the dumps and now I can't do it. And I sort of like had it chopped off really abruptly. Oh, well, yeah, I can see why you'd be really emotional. Zoom out even further. Oh, I had lots of really bad things happen to me when I was a kid and I had no control over any of it. And so here I go to the store thinking this is going to be my thing that's going to save me. And it's taken away from me and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm powerless. And off we go. So... When you look at the situation in the context, now the reaction starts to maybe to make a little bit more sense. Lastly, what I would say is, uh, if you're describing the situation in any of these exercises that I've suggested, one of the things we wanna focus on is the theme or message of the interaction or, or event, the trigger. 
right? So the trigger represents something. If someone is getting upset over little things, it's because those little things represent much bigger things that we know to be true. In the, in the context of going to the store to get your paintbrush and being told no, and when you try to say, well, I, I mean, I know it's not life-saving, but I just really, it's really quick, I'll just pop in, no. So the, the message there that's coming through, it might not be the message that's being sent, but the message that's being received for that person might be, what you want doesn't matter. And if what you want doesn't matter, you don't matter, you're not important, your, your desires are irrelevant. And for the person to be so negatively impacted by that, so um, strongly impacted by that tells me that they probably have a history of feeling that way or maybe even overtly being told that or having that communicated to them. So you can't, you can't look at on the surface and determine uh, certainly for someone else and often not even for ourselves whether something was traumatic or not. Um, we have to look below the surface and the, the simple answer of like uh, what is trauma is uh, anything that traumatizes.